Hey, welcome to lesson three for our Microsoft Word series. Uh, today we're going to be focused on creating a business letter. Um, and I've talked a lot about this in previous lessons um, when we've discussed the idea of um, creating customized themes, um, defile, default styles, things like that. Um, the, the really important part about this is all about this idea of branding. And as we go through this, we're gonna we'll continue to talk about it. Um, but some of the some of the objectives or skills that we're going to be developing today, working on, um, we're going to be inserting and formatting shapes. We are going to be creating a letterhead, um, and again, this will help us develop our own branding um, image later on when we're looking for jobs, things like that. We're going to add borders. We're going to format borders. We are going to put in um, insert tables. We're going to use some smart art and modify smart art. Um, we're going to print an envelope, um, put an address on an envelope. Um, lots of different, lots of different stuff is going to, is going on in this lesson. <clears throat> so let's jump right on in. And so what the project we're going to be working on today is actually going to be a letter from a college, like an acceptance type letter from a college to a student. And so our scenario is that we're working for the Sunset State College um, and reaching out to a prospective student. Um, and then at the end of this letter that discusses, you know, the upcoming orientation, we are going to create a smart art that is going to outline the two-day orientation process. <clears throat> so we're going to be creating a little flyer that we're going to add into this letter. So this is a really a really fun project. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy working with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a blank document in Microsoft Word. And we're going to turn on our formatting marks so we can see what's going on because we're going to have we're going to do a lot of um, we're going to add some objects into this. We're going to add pictures. Um, we're going to reformat some pictures. And a lot of this is going to be um, predicated on how we're spacing, how we're spacing objects related to one another, and then also how we're framing our words around our around our um, graphic elements. So we're, we've got this our formatting marks turned on, and so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and create this letterhead. So to create the letterhead, and again the letterhead typically is going to go up here in the uh, right up here in our header. Um, however, we're going to create our letterhead right on our document. So I'm going to close this. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert a rectangular shape. So I'm just going to come to my insert tab. And then in my illustrations group, my shapes option, I'm going to choose the rectangles. You can either choose it from recently used. It's typically one of the most commonly used ones or right over here, but it's just going to be the regular rectangle. And then when we do that, we're going to get the little crosshair that comes into our um, page. And I'm just going to click and hold and drag. Now, it doesn't make a difference what size we do, something like that. Um, but we're going to format it with, uh, with a shape style. We're going to um, specify what size we're going to create this to. So don't worry about what it looks like right now. All right. So once we've got that, we're going to come up to our Drawing Tools Format tab. We're going to resize it so it's about 0.5 high and 5 inches wide. All right. And then we're going to place this in our, again, we're still in our Drawing Tools Format tab. We're going to click on our Position option. And we're going to position it in the top center with square text wrapping. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply a shape style to that. So we're going to click on that, make sure that's selected still, and then in our shape styles, we are going to click on our shape style options. We're going to choose the um, moderate effect orange accent too. 
And then I'm also going to do my text wrapping options. So in our Drawing Tools Format tab, the Wrap Text in our Arrange group, I'm going to choose the top and bottom text wrapping because I want my text to wrap above or below this object. I don't want it to be tight wrapping where it's going to wrap adjacent to it. I only want text to be above or below. All right. Now with that still selected, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my outline. So the shape outline. And I'm going to choose the gold accent four shape outline for this object. And that's going to just give us a little, a little bit of a um, gold color around it. And then we're going to apply a shape effect. So we're actually going to apply a glow effect to this in that same gold coloring. So shape effects, glow, and then we're going to choose the gold five point accent. Uh, color four. So glow five point accent color four. And if I click away, you can see it's got that little bit of a glow around it. All right, so now with that object still selected, we're going to add some text into this. We're just going to type the text Sunset State College. And then we're going to select that text. So I'm just going to click and drag through it. We're going to increase it to 24 points. So I'm just going to come over. You can either select it and use the mini toolbar or come over to your home tab. We're going to change it to 24 point font. And then we're going to change the font color. Nope, not yet. We're going to leave the font color alone as for the moment. But we are going to bold it. All right. So I'm going to click away from that for a moment. So we've got our text in there. And now let's go ahead and we're going to save this. And now that we've got it started, I'm going to do a file save as. And then where, wherever you save those projects that we work on together, again, mine are on my desktop, in my Try3 folder. And this is Microsoft Word. And I'm going to call this one Sunset State Letterhead. So Sunset State Letterhead. All right, now we're going to add an online image to this. So I'm going to deselect that, and then I'm going to come up to my Insert tab, and then in my Illustrations, I'm going to choose an online picture. And then we're going to get our little Bing search. I'm going to click in the online pictures. I'm going to type Eagle Orange Outline. I'm just making it easier for us, there's a specific image that I want to insert. Um, and if we just type eagle, it's going, we're going to have to search quite a ways to find this object. But I'm just going to type eagle orange outline because it's a little picture of an eagle with an orange outline around it. Enter. And then it's this one right here. It's this first object. Now make sure that if you're not seeing this, make sure that you've got the Creative Commons only icon, that little box checked. And again, we've talked about Creative Commons before. Creative Commons is um, a nonprofit organization that will share images. And so these, so it's, it's, it's common practice, practice for an individual to um, upload an image and then, you know, to a site like Shutterstock or Getty Images or things like that where they're going to require um, a fee to use their images. But there are a lot of objects out there that people have uploaded that you can use for free. And a Creative Commons is like that. And so we're going to click on that one and then insert. Now it's going to insert this big, huge eagle, which is totally fine. We're going to make a lot of changes to this. <clears throat> All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to resize this image. So right now you can see it's six and a half inches high by six and a half inches wide. So it's a square. 
we're going to go ahead and we are going to change this so it's 0.5 high. So I'm going to click 0.5, enter, and then now you'll see that it's much smaller. And then again, this was 0.5 inches high, and so that's why we're making this 0.5 inches high as well, because it's going to go right up next to this. Right, so once we've got that image resized, we're going to also change the color of the picture. So with that picture still selected, in our Picture Tools Format tab, Adjust Group, we're going to click on the Color option, and we're going to choose in the Recolor area, Gold Accent Color for Dark. So we're going to click on that. It's going to give it that kind of gold background to it. All right, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the brightness. So in our corrections, in that same little area, we're going to choose the brightness 20%, contrast minus 20%. So it's the, in the brightness contrast area, it's the second row, fourth column. All right, now we're also going to add a border to this. So with that picture still selected, we're going to add the picture border. So we're going to choose the gold accent four. So here's our picture borders right over here. And we're going to choose that gold accent color four. All right. And then now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So now you can see once we've added this border, it changes our, we've got a little bit of white border around that object. So we want to make sure that that is gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to our Picture Tools Format tab. In our Size group, I'm going to click Crop. And then I'm just going to grab these middle, top, and bottom sizing handles. And I'm just going to click and hold, pull down a little bit so I get to that border of the top. And then come down here, pull up a little bit so I come to the border of the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and crop it one more time. All right, so now that I've got it cropped, you can see I decreased it by about a tenth of an inch. Now I just want to click my up arrow one time, and it's going to readjust that to about 0.5 by 0.65, somewhere right around there. All right, so now you can see we, we lost that white border surrounding it. I'm going to zoom back out a little so I can see my work. I'm at about 150 right now. All right, so now we've got that border around it. We've eliminated some of that white boundary around the picture. Now we're going to change the text wrapping of this image. So with the image selected, we're going to come to our Picture Tools Format tab, and we're going to change the wrapping to Wrap text, we're going to choose in front of text. <clears throat> All right. And so now we can put this object on top of something, and it will get planted right there. But what we're actually going to do is we're just going to move it so it's right up next to this Sunset State College. All right, so now what we're going to do is, this is a little bit unbalanced. You know, we've got this little eagle over here. We've got our Sunset State College banner. But what we're going to do is we're going to add the same image over here. But instead of adding a new image and then reformatting it, we're just going to click on that. And we are going to, I'm going to do a Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. And it's going to paste that exact same image with the, with the gold accent color, that border that we've added. Um, we've also changed the brightness and the contrast, and we've eliminated some of that white space around the image. All right, so with that picture selected, I'm just going to drag it over to the other side. And then as I get close here, I'm just going to kind of plant it right next to it. And now you'll see we've got this eagle over here, this eagle over here. But 
what we want to do is we want to balance it out a little bit more. So we've got this eagle facing to the right. We want this eagle to flip around and face to the left to kind of make it a little more um, asymmetrical. Or symmetrical, not asymmetrical. And so what we're going to do is on the rotate object, so it's, it's got like the little isosceles triangle upwards and then it's also flat down perpendicular we're going to click on that little option and we're going to say rotate or sorry flip horizontal again so if you can see if you rotate this object a little bit you can see what's going to happen to it again we're going to say flip horizontal and it's going to automatically flip that around so now we've got those two eagles facing one another All right, so now we're going to bring our insertion point, click back into the document. It's going to come right underneath this Sunset State College banner that we've just created. Now we're going to format and enter the text for the college. So I'm going to do Control E, which will center the text in the page. And again, you can click in your Home tab, Paragraph Group. You can click on that Center Align option right there but control E does the same thing. And then we're just going to type our text. So office of admissions, comma, 1001 Canton Street, Let's see, Canton Street, and then comma, MC 3000, so main campus 3000, comma, and then Novato, N-O-V-A-T-O, California, C-A, and the zip code 94945. And then we're going to hit the space bar. And now we're going to separate our address from the website in our letterhead and the phone number by including a little symbol. So I'm going to come, after I've hit that insertion or that space bar one time, I'm going to come up to my insert tab, and then in my symbols group over here, I'm going to click on that symbol option, and then more symbols. And then here I'm going to add the dot symbol. And so it's going to be a little bullet point, and for me it's this one right here. It's the little one. It's not going to be that big, huge bullet that we've seen and that we've used previously. Um, or you can click on it right there. So it's going to be in our normal text. And if yours says ASCII decimal, you can type 149 in the character code. And it's going to bring up that little bullet point. If it doesn't say ASCII down here, if it says something else like Unicode, just click on that ASCII decimal and then type 149 into the character code and then insert. <clears throat> All right, and then we're going to close that. Then space bar. Now we're going to type our phone number, which is 415 555 0199 space and then again symbol and this time the symbol that we've just used is right here so i'm just going to click on that and then space and then our website sunset.edu And then we're, with that line still selected, now we're going to add a border to this um, letterhead. So we're just going to come right over here. We're going to click on that border button, and it's going to bring in a bottom border. And then enter to go to the next line. Now you'll notice that when we go to that next line, it keeps our border one line you know, below where we are. What we're just going to do is come up to our Home tab, Font Group, click on that clear formatting the little eraser bloop it'll clear that formatting off of that line and shift it back up so now we've got our sunset state college letterhead so this is our letterhead 
in the final form. So I'm going to go ahead with our with this still selected. I'm going to go ahead and click save one more time. All right, so we've got that saved again. So this is our sunsets data letterhead, our the final version of the letterhead. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start to create our business letter. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to resave this document so we can type the letter. So we've got our sunset let state letterhead created. I'm also going to do a file save as and then in the same location this might try three classes Microsoft Word I'm going to call this one Thomas welcome letter so I'm just going to type Thomas welcome letter and so now we've got our letterhead saved and then we've also got our, the new document saved which we can start to edit all right so with our insertion point at the top of that at the top of that um, letterhead, or below the letterhead, excuse me. And then you'll notice that right now we're at about the two inch mar mark from the top of the page, which is where you want to create your formal business communications. You should have the, the top two inches are going to be for your letterhead and any kind of um, branding or identification marking that you want on that letterhead. And then the letter itself should start at the two inch mark. And you can see right down here in my status bar, I'm at the two inch mark from the top of the page. And so if you want, if you don't see that at two inches, right click on that status bar and then make sure your vertical page position is turned on. In fact, you can take a look at what I've got selected here. And if you want to turn all of those on, great. If you don't, fine. I would say formatted page number, section, page number, and vertical page position are the ones that you should have turned on. But other than that, it's up to you. All right. So the first thing we're going to do with this letter is we are going to set some tab stops. Now, to do the tab stops, there's a couple things that you want to have on. I would, one, make sure your ruler is turned on. So you've got a, a horizontal and a vertical ruler. If it's not turned on, go to your View tab. And then in the Show group, make sure you've got that little ruler checkbox selected and that will turn on that ruler and then you'll notice right up here in the top left corner of this page we've got our different tabs and if you click through that you can see this is the first one is the default it's like kind of looks like a little l this is our left tab if we click that one time it turns into an upside down t this is a center tab so that's going to center the tab um, it's going to the it's going to set a tab and then the text will center from that tab stop. So it's not going to center it in the page. It's going to center the text on the tab stop, and we'll see what that looks like a little bit later. Click it again. We now have a right tab, and so now the tab this the text will align at the right point of that tab stop. Click it again. We have a decimal tab. And that's going to give us, so if we're dealing with uh, dollars and cents, um, the decimal tab is always going to align um, with a with a, at the decimal point with two decimal places, unless you change it, which you can do. Click it one more time. Now we've got a bar tab. Now this is not like going out on Friday nights. This is a tab that's going to be just a vertical bar at that tab point. Click on it again. We've got our first line indent, which you can see right up here, which is where our first line of where our first um, line of text will start. Click on it again. We now have our hanging indent, which is how text will hang below the first line. And then the next one will bring us right back to our left tab. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to create a three and a half inch left tab. So with our, with this little L showing, we're going to come over here and we're going to click on the ruler at that 3.5 mark. So halfway between the three and the four, it's going to be that thick kind of bar line looking thing. And again, now you'll see in our ruler, we have a little tab right there. And 
And so that's where we're going to add our tab. All right. So now with that selected, we're going to hit our tab key one time. Actually, let's first, let's do another, let's do enter one time. And then tab. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit of space right there. All right, so we've got that brought it into that three and a half inch mark. And then we're going to type the current date. But we're actually going to insert it as opposed to typing it. So we're going to come to our insert tab. And then in our text group, we're going to click on that little calendar looking icon. And we're going to choose the April 5, 2021 option. And then we're going to make sure that we don't have this one selected. Update automatically. So if it's if it's clicked, just check it to un click the little check mark to uncheck it, and then OK. And that's going to bring our date right in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. All right, and then let's going to we're going to go ahead and enter our um, salutation information. So we're going to type Mr. Caleb Thomas. Enter. Oops. Make sure I spell it correctly. And then the address 982 Bartlett Street. 982 Bartlett Street. And that's in Live Oak, California. Zip code nine five nine five three. And then enter, enter. And then we're going to type Dear Caleb, comma, enter. And enter. All right. So now when we're creating a business letter, what we typically want to do is we want to apply the no spacing style. So if we, if we take a look at this letter as it is right now, we've got this big gap of space between our paragraphs. So I'm going to select this range right here. Now when I do this, I may lose this tab, um, but we'll, we'll get it back. And then on my home tab, and I want to show you how this will look. So we've got our normal spacing applied right now. If we choose no spacing, you can see now it brings everything closer together. And this is what we should, what we should look for when we're doing, when we're adding our, um, when we're creating our business letters is using that no spacing. Now, again, you'll see that when I did that, it took out that tab stop, but the tab is still here. So I'm just going to come back over here on the three and a half mark, click it, and then that'll bring that tab right back in there. But just make sure all of the text was still selected when you did that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to just type the text of our of our letter. So the text is going to say, Congratulations on your admission to the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Sunset State College for the fall semester of 2021. On behalf of our students, faculty, and staff, I welcome you to our academic community. Our decision to admit you to our college is an acknowledgement of your potential and our confidence in you as a valuable addition to our student body. We would like to inform you of important upcoming dates, followed by a colon, and then we hit our enter two times. All right, so at this point, we're going we're gonna to add a table to this document that's going to kind of outline some of those important dates. So we're going to go to our Insert tab, and then we're going to click on Table. And then when we click on Table, it's going to bring us a table that we can insert. We're going to insert a one by th or a three by one table, three columns, one row. All right. And then once we've got that table entered, now we're going to enter some information into that. So we're going to type dates 
in the first one, tab, event, tab, and then notes. All right, and then we hit the tab key again, and it's going to add a new line or a new row to our table. All right, and so now we're just going to continue entering the text. So we've going to, we're going to have July 12th through the 16th and July 29 or 19th through 23rd dates. We're going to have August 16th through 17th as well as August 23rd. And after each after each line, we're just going to hit the tab key to and to add a new row. So for example, we've got July 12-16 and July 19-23 tab the event is orientation and registration. And then tab, and then the notes C, brief schedule on next page. And then tab. So after we've entered the other lines, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to format our table. So with the table still selected, so with any, any our insertion point anywhere in that table, we're going to come up to our table tools design tab and then we're going to click on that little table style more options and we're going to apply the grid table one light accent two and it's going to apply it that orange kind of shading. All right and so with that I'm going to scroll up a little bit. We're going to select this one column, the notes column, and we're going to italicize the text. So if I hover over that column directly above notes, you can see I get this bold down pointing arrow. I'm just going to click, and then you can either click on the I for italics right here in your mini toolbar, or you can do control I to italicize that text. All right. So now we've got, click away from that, we've got that formatted. And so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to enter more text in our letter. So I'm just going to click below that table, hit my Enter key, and then continue with my letter before orientation you must do the following through our campus website and then after we hit our enter I'm going to type shift 8 so I'm going to add the little asterisk and I'm going to hit my space bar and when I do that it automatically create a bulleted list now we could click right up here to add a bulleted list but if you do asterisk space, it's just the shortcut to format a bulleted list. So again, I did shift eight to add the asterisk, hit the space bar one time, and it automatically formatted it as a bulleted list. So we're going to type our complete a housing contract or housing exemption form. Enter. Schedule your math placement exam. Oopsie. And I'll correct that. Your math placement exam and then enter. And then reserve your orientation dates. Enter. And then I'm going to hit enter again. And then when I hit enter, it'll add it it'll start to format it as a new bullet point. If I click enter again, it's going to unformat it as a bullet as a bulleted list. All right. Then I'm just going to hit my enter key one more time and then I am confident you will pursue your passions.
and accomplish your goals at, as a sunset state flying eagle. Period, and then enter enter and then we're gonna hit our tab key to bring our tab out to that three and a half inch mark sincerely comma enter 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 because we're gonna leave ourselves some space to, to sign it and then tab one more time Lucy R song enter tab director of admissions all right and then now you'll notice we've got a, i've made a couple spelling errors so i'm just going to click on my spell check and the first one I'm just going to collect, correct my marks, your, and then pursue, not peruse, pursue. All right. I'm going to click on my save icon again to save our work. And now we're going to add a second page to this document using a smart art. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a page break. So I'm going to come to my layout tab and then breaks, and then I'm going to click page break. I'm just going to add a page break right after that director of admissions text. All right, so now page two, we're going to center the text. So again, I'm going to do control E to center the text on the page. And I'm going to make the text bold. I'm also going to change this text size to 36 to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to give it the orange accent 2, darker 25% font color. All right, and then we're going to type the text orientation and registration. Enter student schedule. All right. And then we're going to add a border to that paragraph. And again, I'm just going to click the bottom border. But then I decided that, that I really want to jazz up this border a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both par paragraphs, come to my border options, go to borders and shading, and then here I'm going to choose in my borders, instead of this not, no borders and using the default, I'm going to click box border. And then I'm going to choose the color orange accent four or to accent two darker 25 percent i'm going to change it to a two and a half or it's going to be two and a quarter point and i'm also going to use this long this dash dot format so it's the one two three four fifth one down right there and again two and a quarter point this is going to give you a preview of what it's going to look like. I'm going to apply it to the paragraph. OK. And then now we have our border. All right. So I'm going to click my Enter key again. And then you'll notice it applies that border just like we did before. I'm going to click Clear Formatting. And it's going to bring me back to the No Formatting applied to that line. I'm going to hit my Enter key one time to go down to that next line. And then this time I'm going to go back to my no spacing option. And then we're going to continue to write our text. So we look forward 
All right, so we're going to continue entering the text. Below you will find a general schedule for the two days you will be on campus for orientation registration. During orientation, we will walk around campus, so please dress accordingly. All right, so now we're going to underline a couple of elements of text. So we're going to, the first one we're going to do is the two days. So I'm going to select the text two days. And with the two days selected, I'm going to go to my underline button. But I'm not going to click on the underline. I'm going to click on the little option next to underline, the little more option. And then here, I'm going to apply a different underline. So instead of using the just the normal standard one, I'm going to use one similar, so the long the dot dash underline like we used up here. So I'm going to click on that dot dash. I'm going to click again and I'm going to choose the underline color orange accent 2 darker 25 percent. All right and with that text still selected I'm going to click on my format painter to copy that formatting and then I'm going to just click on the word please one time and it's going to copy that formatting. All right, so I'm going to select this text right here and I'm going to change it by clicking the little increase font two times to 14 to make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> and then after that dress accordingly, oopsie, and actually I'm going to do please dress accordingly is all, all of it will and click on format painter again and click and drag through dress accordingly to apply that underline the same way. Again, so two days and then please dress accordingly will all be underlined. All right, so after that text, I'm going to hit enter and then enter one more time. I'm going to center the text again in this line, and then we're going to add a SmartArt graphic. So I'm going to go to my Insert tab, and then SmartArt. And now you can see all of these different options for SmartArt. We are going to use the List options. So we're going to click on List, and then we're going to choose the Grouped List. And so the group list is actually going to be this. Do, do, do. Is it this first option? It's going to be right here. Grouped list. So it's the fourth row, fifth row, second column. And then OK. Now we our orientation is two days. So we don't need all three of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here in this third column. I'm going to click in this bottom shape and then hit delete on my keyboard, and then I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard again, and then one more time, delete, to eliminate that whole third column. Now we've got just these two elements. So we're going to type in this text for this placeholder, day one, and then over here we're going to type day two. I'm going to come into this placeholder in that first object below day one, and I'm going to type the text check hyphen in space and then in parentheses nine o'clock dash ten o'clock and then close the parentheses. Now you'll notice that when we type this, it resizes the text. And then as we add more objects, it'll continue to resize the text. So it's going to get a little bit smaller as we go. I'm going to click on that next object right below. Welcome and general info session. So welcome and general info session, space, and then open parentheses, 10, 15, dash, 1145, close the parentheses. 
And then once I've got that, I'm going to click Add Shape. It's going to put in another shape immediately below that. And then I'm just going to continue to type the text. So the next one is going to be lunch, space, and then it's always going to be a space, open parentheses, 12 o'clock, dash, 12.45, close the parentheses, add shape. All right. And so then we're going to continue. So after lunch, We've got student accounts and services session. So student accounts and services session, space, open parentheses, 1 o'clock to 1.45, add shape. Meetings with advisors, meetings with advisors. Space, open parentheses, 2 o'clock to 2.45. Add shape, department meetings, and that's going to be 3 o'clock to 3.45. Add a shape, expo is 4, oopsie, 4 o'clock to 5.15. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this text a little bit more clearly. Add a shape. Dinner, 5.30 to 6, oopsie. Come on, dinner is 5.30 dash 6.45. Add shape, evening activities, activities, and that's 7 to 10, so 7 to 10, come on, I don't know why that keeps doing that. All right, and then that's the end of that. So we're going to come over to our another placeholder below this object. And then under day two, we're going to have our breakfast, which will be 7 to 7.45. And then we'll have housing services session. And that's going to be 8 o'clock dash 8.30. And then we're going to add a shape. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit, so hopefully it's not going to keep getting all wonky on us. And then our next one is going to be dining services session. Dining services session. And that's 8.35 to 9.05. We're going to add a shape. Health services session, and that is going to be nine ten to nine forty. Adding a shape, campus tour ten o'clock to eleven forty five. Adding a shape. Just a couple more. So our lunch, 12 to 12.45. Adding a shape. General education session. That's going to be 
1 o'clock to 1.45. Register for classes, 2 to 3.15. And then finally, adding our last shape, Welcome Week Overview. Come on. And that is going to be 3.30 to 4 o'clock. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and make my little change to that general section to make a general section. All right, so now that we've got that, all the text entered, I'm going to just zoom out a little bit so we can see this whole object in one, in one shot. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to format this a little bit. So with this smart art still selected, and I want to make sure if I click on one of them, you'll see only one of them is surrounded. I want to make sure that I click on the whole thing so everything is selected. And I'm going to click on that change colors. And then there, I'm going to click on this colorful accent colors. All right. And then I'm going to apply a style to this. So with that still selected, I'm going to come over and look at my styles, so all these options. If you, want to, if you want to apply a different one to make it a little jazzy, go ahead and choose whatever one you want. I'm going to choose the one called Subtle Effect. So it's the third one in this best match for document row. All right, and then we're going to resize this object on the page. And we're just about done with this. So in our SmartArt Tools Format tab, instead of our Design tab, we're going to come over to the Size option. And then we're going to go ahead and resize that one. So it is... I'm going to zoom out a little bit because we want to fit it onto this page. So we can see we've got this page right here. I'm just going to click on this little sizing handle in the bottom center, pull it down to resize that. And so for me, it changed it to about six. I'll make it exactly six high by six wide. All right, and then I'm going to go to my View tab, go to Multiple Pages, and so now we can see what that document looks like in Multiple Page View. Let me turn off my formatting marks. Looks good. All right, so then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an envelope to this. So I'm going to go back in. To, I'm going to click on page one. I'm going to go to my view tab and then page width. And then I'm going to select Mr. Caleb Thomas, Live Oak, California. So with that, with that text selected, I'm going to come to my mailings tab and I'm going to click envelope. And then when I do that, it's going to automatically populate Caleb's address right in here. And then in my return address area, I'm going to go ahead and type that Sunset State College. So Sunset State College, enter Office of Admissions, enter, and then the address was 1001. Canton Street, and then enter MC3000, or main campus, 3000, or 
uh, was it 3,000 or 3,300? 3,000, okay. And then enter Novato, California, and it was 94945, the zip code. All right, and then I'm going to click Add to Document. So it's going to add this letter right into our document. And I don't, you don't need to save that as the default. And then you'll notice that when we do that, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, but you can see it automatically formats a number 10 business envelope. And then here's so that it adds it to the beginning of our document. And we've got our letter, the little table. And then finally, our orientation schedule with that smart art included. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that one more time. And that project is now complete.